Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear friends, Allah bless you all. Let's resume. Okay, Al Fatiha. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد صلاة تفرحه وتسعده وترضيه واجزه بها عنا ما هو أهله يا أرحم الراحمين وآله وسلم اللهم زدنا ولا تنقصنا وأكرمنا ولا تهنا وأعطنا ولا تحرمنا وآثرنا ولا تؤثر علينا وأرضنا وارض عنا يا كريم أوكي سو الحمد لله رب العالمين we were looking at the verse of Surah Al-Anfal and so the last verse we looked at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the believers that be firm, right? When you meet the enemy, be firm. And, you know, this is something that's really significant. Um, we're not encouraged to go looking for a fight, basically, right? There's, uh, you know, there's many uh, narrations from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abdullah bin Abi Awfa narrates in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim uh, is narrated by Imam Bukhari and Muslim from Abdullah bin Abi Awfa. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ya ayyuhal nas, O people, la tatamannaw liqa al-adu. Don't wish to meet the enemy in battle. Right? <coughs> Why? Because you're likely to get harmed. Others are likely to get harmed. Was'alu Allah al-afiyah. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for well-being, for the ability to remain away from such situations. So it's not about, you know, aggression. It's not about going to harm people. Yes, if there's tyranny, if there's some sort of dhulm or, you know, some sort of oppression or some sort of other harm, you know, people preventing others from drawing closer to God or anything like this, that's a different matter. But, you know, uh, don't desire to meet the enemy. فَإِذَا لَقِيتُ مُوهُمْ فَاصْبِرُوا And when you meet them in battle, then be firm, be steadfast and strong. So sabr here doesn't mean just to passively uh, accept everything that's happening in life. It means be strong. It's an active state here. Be firm, be resolute. وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّ الْجَنَّةَ تَحْتَ ظِلَالِ And know that the garden is under the, <coughs> the shades of, of swords. Alhamdulillah, uh, Rabbil Alameen. Um, meaning that um, that when it's done uh, for the sake of Allah, you know the just uh, the just warfare is done for the sake of Allah, and if a death occurs, then a person you know goes to paradise as a shaheed. And then he said, uh, uh, "Yeah." And then um, then he stood up and he made a dua. Allahumma munzil al-kitab. Oh Allah, those the one who revealed the book. Wa mujri al-sahab. He who makes the clouds move. These huge clouds, you know, they may be you know, water, water vapor, but just the way he makes them all just unite and be one solid group and moves them. Wa hazim al-ahzab. And the destroyer of the confederates. You know, those who get together to fight the messengers. Ihzimhum. Wansurna alayhim. Or it can mean, yeah, the groups who got together to, to, to come to the battle of uh, the trench in Medina. Defeat them and give us victory over them or help us against them. So this is what he's saying, right? So the verse here says... After saying that, you know, be firm and then remember Allah much if you want success. And he says, وَأَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ And obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Obey Allah uh, and his messenger uh, when it comes to all matters. Um, but in uh, but especially, you know, in matters, you know, like in warfare, like we saw what happened at the battle of, of Uhud. <coughs> so obey Allah and obey His Messenger in your words and deeds, outwardly, inwardly. That's where your success is going to be, right? Wala tanazau fatafshalu, and don't 
Oh, subhanallah and don't argue with each other don't fight with each other we looked at this last time don't argue and fight with each other lest um how was it translated um, um or you'd be discouraged and weakened fashal is where a person just is weakened and he loses his, his strength his resolve his capability and this can happen if people are not united you know a united front you know uh, arguments and disputes lead to people being out of sync with each other <coughs> and that's not what you want on the battlefield you want everyone on the same page you know the same energy right ready to go forward and and fight so he said don't argue with each other so just go back to the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam what he commands do don't instead of obeying his commands start arguing with each other lest you you know lest you're discouraged unless you, you you lose heart and and you're not able to and you're not able to uh, fight as you should have right and <clears throat> yeah it's really important really important and lest what tadhhaba reehukum and lest your wind dissipate right and so don't dispute with each other or you'll be discouraged and weakened but here what does it mean your wind dissipate <coughs> uh it's like a ship uh, when it's at sea and you know it has the mast and the sail and the wind comes and blows it and a good strong wind will keep blowing the ship and it will move at great speed <clears throat> but if the wind dissipates it stops then eventually you know the, the ship loses its momentum and it stops so it's comparing you know the uh, the the strength and the ability to attack with with vigor and firmness and determination and <clears throat> to maintain that uh, that uh, those types of attacks and to maintain that uh, that um, that way of warfare basically that way of fighting the enemy is comparing that to a ship with the wind blowing at it so what's the wind here it's the unity amongst the believers they're all fighting for the sake of god to remove oppression these sorts of things they're all fighting uh, with this on the with this united cause but if they argue then you know someone could you know e egos can come in the way and no i don't you know i don't like this person i don't want to be fighting you know it becomes a separate thing i'll fight for my group not for the greater cause you know these sorts of things so the argumentation is being compared to you know a wind that's a good strong wind dissipating so weakness is going to happen right it's going to occur and you know it affects the success of the scenario so he says what that have very hukum and there are other positions but you know quite frankly um someone even, even suggested that it, it means their their own fragrance would disappear and that's definitely not <laughs> uh what the verse is saying <coughs> so he says wasbiru and be firm and strong and resolute as we talked about last time because this this firmness and this steadfastness in battle is one of the strongest means one of the greatest means uh, to success right and so the verse is saying remember allah these verses remember allah and be strong and firm in battle and obey allah and his messenger don't argue with each other these four points are what will give you success otherwise you know success uh, comes you know when the means are taken and these are the means otherwise it won't come right allah so then uh, he says in allah ma'as sabirin and indeed allah the ultimate supreme king the true deity is with those who are firm and persevering and steadfast right the witness the witness of strength and aid and giving victory to these people allah is with them in that way meaning if you do this you'll have allah with you and allah will give you victory and you'll be so you'll be victorious so the following these commands that he gave will ensure victory right because you'll have allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with you. Uh, <coughs> And then he says, "Wala takunu kaladin akharju min diyarihim, bataran wariaan wariaan nasi yasuduna an sabilillah." 
And do not be like those pagans who left their homes arrogantly only to be seen by people and to hinder others from Allah's path. Wallahu bima ya'maluna muhita. Right, so this is significant. So he says, Allah, he says, don't be like those people. Wala takunu kalladhina kharaju min diyarihim bataran. Okay, so who is he talking about? He's talking about Quraysh. And Abu Saud says here, uh, a principle from Usul al Fiqh, an nahyu an ishay amrun bi diddihi. That forbidding someone from doing a matter entails a command to do the opposite, right? So, like you, you say to someone, don't steal. It entails that like, be honest, right? Be trustworthy. So it entails that. So don't be like this. Be the opposite. Be people who Allah has just described in the previous two verses. Be like them. And <clears throat> then there are qualities here that they need to. Uh, the opposite of <coughs> and don't be like those who left their homes bataran so batar you could say arrogance right but batar is the inability to handle blessings right a blessing can come to a person and so what do you do when you when you receive a blessing from god you're supposed to feel appreciation that allah gave me this you're supposed to see that we don't deserve really any of the blessings that we have, right? And Allah gives them out of His generosity. So you see that it's from Allah's generosity, not from a sense, not from a sense of entitlement. And you can see people who are arrogant, and you know you can see people who've just been, you know, raised with a silver spoon in their mouth and not seeing the value of you know things. They walk around arrogant, right? So this is how they do it. So, they, because they're unable to appreciate God, see Allah's generosity and favor on them, and show thanks for that blessing. These three things. They're unable to do this, so the blessing gets to their head, and they think, oh, I must be so special, I must be so great. Look how important and significant I am. All of it is foolishness, right? Because Allah gave you those gifts, and Allah can withhold those gifts, right? Allah protect. <coughs> so don't... Don't be like those who left their homes out of arrogance. So how should you be? Humble. Knowing that whatever you have, وَمَا بِكُمْ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ Whatever blessings that you have, it's from God. So knowing that and uh, understanding that. You know, understanding that. And uh, <clears throat> so he says, وَرِئَا uh, النَّاسِ And they, they leave you know, showing off to people. Ri'a is generally, you know, doing acts of good to make other people think that, you know, you're great. But you can also or make other people think you're religious. But here it's also, you know, for them to say, they, they, that's what they were doing. They were showing, look, we're on the side of God and our religion is the truest religion. And, you know, <coughs> these are the kind of things they were saying. And, <coughs> you know, Ri'a is showing... Um, that we're brave and we're defending our religion and we're def look at you people, the rest of you Arabs, <laughs> you haven't done anything, we're doing it all. And this is really the whole idea that they have. And Ri'a al Nasi. And <clears throat> so he says, um, uh, Bataran and Ri'a al Nasi. Right? They're both nouns here. And uh, <clears throat> so. Um, it shows that the arrogance and this desire to show their significance and their perceived importance and significance, these qualities were rooted in their hearts. It was, and it, you really need a prophet, right, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But you need a prophet uh, and his guidance and revelation to take this out of you, right? Most people aren't even aware, you know, of you know of these things. For example, one of the righteous in Islam. Uh, ulama of the inward uh, he said man man lam yataghalghal fi ilmina hadha mata musirran ala al-kaba'ir wa huwa la ya'lam whoever doesn't become steeped in, engrossed in this knowledge of ours dies while still stubbornly persisting on in enormities major sins without even realizing it Right, so the significance of this. So you need guidance and revelation. So so these qualities were firmly rooted in their hearts. <coughs> and then um, 
<coughs> and then he says, um, وَيَصُدُّونَ And so now with the verb present tense, again and again and again and again, every time they get the opportunity, they will oppose the Messenger of Allah. They will try to block people. Uh, um, <coughs> they will try um block people from the way of Allah. It wasn't always like this, but as soon as the Prophet started calling people to Allah, the arrogance kicked in and they thought, no, how could anyone be doing this? How could he get revelation and not us? So that's when they started it. So it's not showing a permanent trait, but it's a, a recurring trait, a recurring action. Yasudduna blocking an sabilillah and the way of Allah, the Supreme King, the ultimate authority, the true deity, they're blocking people from his way. And <coughs> it's really a horrible thing. <coughs> so then he says, "Wallahu bima ya'maluna muhiit." Indefinite for the word muhiit in a tremendous way. Literally means Allah is surrounds all that they do. But it's in reference to His knowledge that Allah's knowledge encompasses everything that they're doing. Everything that they plan, or that they do publicly, privately, in their thoughts, in their intentions, Allah knows every single bit of it. So, what is this? And this is really a warning, right? From having these about having these qualities, don't do this, don't have these qualities, don't entertain them within yourself, don't identify them, don't let them grow and breed within you because it leads to these types of actions that are wrong. And what's going to happen? <coughs> When these wrong actions are done, uh, at the end of the day, you have to face Allah and you go back to Allah for judgment and Allah knows everything that you've done. You can't escape. There's nothing you can do to get away from this, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take them to task. And uh, so those who have done good, He'll reward them with good. And those who have done bad, He'll recompense them with what they deserve, you know, the, the fruits of their, of their own deeds. And one example of this <coughs> is uh, in the next verse when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about Iblis who uh, his arrogance led him to the worst situation and he's going to have a very difficult time when he has to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. <coughs> so he says, وَإِذْ زَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ أَعْمَالَهُمْ And recall when shaitan adorned for them made seemly, made beautiful their deeds, that the evil acts that they did, he made them seem incredibly beautiful and good and desirable. وَقَالَ لَا غَالِبَ لَكُمُ الْيَوْمَ مِنَ النَّاسِ وَإِنِّي جَارٌ لَكُمْ Look at this. So he says, no one can overcome you today and I am surely by your side. Look at this. He said more than this. He says, وَإِذْ زَيَّنَ لَهُمْ مِنَ التَّزِينَ From the word tazin to adorn, <coughs> to beautify, to put decorations up, anything like this, to make something appear more attractive and beautiful than it actually is. So there's one way, like something's okay or something's beautiful and you add something to it, it just adds, to, you know, increases its splendor and, and desirability. And then there's the other form where something is hideous, right, disgusting, but so much is laid on top of it to make it look beautiful that you think, oh wow, you know, but then when the reality of it is shown, you're revolted by it. And that's the same thing here. Their evil deeds, when they see the reality of them, they're going to regret them. So he says, <coughs> when shaitan, the one who's far from any sort of good, as shaitan, iblis here, right? The one who's completely far from any sort of good and doesn't want any good for human beings at all. He made their deems, deeds seem good to them. وَقَالَ And he said, I mean, look at how he said it. But, لَا غَالِبَ لَكُمُ الْيَوْمَ Today, there's no ghalib, there's no one, uh, there's no one can, who can defeat you. There's no victor against you. There's no, there's no one who can overcome you and defeat you today. Right, today, like this is your day, this is your time to shine. Go and do, right? Minanas, from all of pe from all the people, all of humanity, you could say. But from all people, there's no one that can defeat you. So, let alone, what he's trying to say to them, let alone, you know, the, the Muslims, they can't defeat you. And then he says, وَإِنِّي جَارٌ لَكُمْ And I am your protector. 
I am the one who's helping you. I will ensure that <clears throat> that you'll win. And you know, there's a number of narrations. You know, some people came, Allah, and so they thought they were untouchable. But <coughs> some people came, and you know, they went to uh, uh, Abu Jahl, offering aid. And you know, should we get our soldiers to come with you? And he said no. And you know, he was pretty sure that um, uh, that they're going to win. So that's what happened. That's what uh, that's what he thought. But it didn't happen. Let's just look at the rest of the verse and we'll come back. فلما تراءت الفئتان نقص على عقبيه. So when the two forces faced off, he cowered and said, وقال إني بريء منكم إني أرى ما لا ترون. I said I have absolutely nothing to do with you. I certainly see what you do not what you do not see. إني أخاف الله والله شديد العقاب. I truly fear Allah, and for Allah is severe in punishment. Okay, <clears throat> so when the two armies met, when the believers, when the Muslims, and the idolaters met, <clears throat> what happened? Nakasa ala akibay. He turned and fled. Right. He turned. Nakasa ala akibay. What that literally means is that he started walking backwards, right? And you see this someone who see someone who's seen something scary, they walk backwards away from it. It's like it's too scary for them. Like they, you know, they just have to look at it because it's so scary, and then they can't even turn around and run. But they start movement initially by walking backwards. Nakasa, nakasa, ala akib. And so what has he seen? He's seen the angels. <clears throat> we won't go into it, but there's various narrations saying he saw Sayyidina Jibreel. Uh, but he was seeing the angels and he thought, if I'm here fighting with them, I could get killed. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, said to Iblis that he's, he, he, he gets a reprieve, meaning he doesn't die. Iblis wanted to not die right, right until the Day of Judgment, so he wouldn't die ever. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, no, that, you know, he, 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 he's got a reprieve, but until a particular point, he thought maybe now is the one where I'm going to get killed. So he fled, you know, he can't, he can't face the angels, so they would have destroyed him. <coughs> so he says, قَالَ إِنِّي Nominal sentence with inna, really highly emphasized, fixed, firm, he, this is his, his reality coming out. إِنِّي بَرِيءٌ مِّنْكُمْ I have, I have no ties to you. I have all ties to you. I have no connection to you whatsoever. This is what happens. People who take the devil as their ally. Now, they may not see it, or he's the ally, but what are they doing? They're doing the things he wants to, people to do, the bad things, the wrong things, that are distance from Allah, harming others. And you know, opposing God, these sorts of things, they think we're doing okay because He's adorned their works for them. And <clears throat> but in in reality, what's happening? He's uh, go He's goading and enticing them, and they've taken Him as their ally. And the ultimate reality of it, He ditches you. He ditches everyone. Why? Because He wants to lead humanity to a place where Allah is going to be angry with them, and He's going to run away. Right, so he says, Inni bari'un. <coughs> I have absolutely nothing. Bari, fa'il, very strong and emphatic way of saying it. Inni ara ma la taroun. I see what you don't see, the angels. Inni akhafullaha. And indeed, I am afraid of Allah, meaning Allah unleashing upon uh, Iblis, uh, one of the angels, like Sayyidina Jibreel, alayhi salatu wasalam, and then for them to take his life. So he is afraid of that. And so now there's two ways of understanding the, the last sentence. Wallahu shadidu al-iqab. Allah is intense in punishment. The iqab, the punishment that comes after doing something wrong. Either it's taken literally, Allah is intense in that. Uh, sorry, no, it's, ta it's taken literally, but either we take it as to mean that it's Iblis's words, or we can say, after inni akhaf Allah full stop, end quotation, and this is Allah's um, commentary. And the first seems more likely, right? He says, I am afraid of Allah, the Supreme King, and Allah, the Supreme King, is intense in punishment. Hence, him being afraid of him, and he knows he's done enough to warrant a punishment. And that's basically what he says. So, <clears throat> this verse... There are there are a couple of positions um, where he says, 
I'm going to help you, you know, and you know, that no one can defeat you. Did Iblis literally say this? Like, did Iblis whisper it as a waspasa to all of them and just internally increase their confidence, in, you know, in, in going and doing the wrong thing? That's one position. And then there's another, which is that um, <clears throat> he, uh, he took on the form of Suraka ibn Malik, right? One of the Arabs. And that's the stronger position, right? Well, we're going to come to this. We had there are clear narrations, you know, from a number of sources that um, Suraka ibn Malik ibn Jorsham, he was a uh, uh, he was a poet from uh, Al Kinani, and uh, he he wasn't there, right? He wasn't there. You know, he's the one who was chasing the the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam on the Hijra, and his his camel started to started to sink into the ground, and you know. Anyway, so he, later he became a Muslim, but he wasn't there at Badr. But Iblis took his form because um, was it Banu Banu Sa'id? No, Banu Sa'id. The uh, Suraka's tribe. Were, were well known and uh, so he if, if he came to them no one can defeat you i'm protecting you meaning i will get my tribe to come and also fight with you if need be and whatever so they got you know they were happy that oh yeah he's with us and um <laughs> and then when he saw the angels he fled in one narration he, he had uh, one of the uh, pagans al harith ibn hisham uh, he was holding suraka's hand or arm and suraka's trying to flee and well, yeah iblis is trying to flee and so he said where are you going and he said look i see what you don't see and he pushed him harith in the chest and he ran off and uh, and then later when these people ended up accepting Islam, when they went back to Mecca, they said Suraka caused us to uh, to be defeated. Like he filled us with confidence, and then he fled. And then Suraka, that when the word got to him, said, "What are you talking about? I I only learned that you actually went to fight when I heard of your defeat." Then after they became Muslims, they realized that it wasn't him; it was Iblis. And uh, you know, there's a hadith in the Muatta of Imam Malik where the Prophet said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Iblis, there's no day where Iblis has been seen uh, smaller, which is an indication of being humiliated, and, and more humiliated and more angry than, uh, than on the day of uh, Arafah. When uh, when he sees that Allah, you know, so much mercy is coming down from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, with one exception, and that was the way he was seen on the day of Badr. The angels saw him and... You know, he was extremely humiliated and angry and everything because of that victory that the believers had. And so, what is it then? Was it <coughs> Iblis there strengthening them with his whispers? Or was it Iblis in the form of Suraka? And so some of the ulama went with one, and some went with the other, and others said, you know what? Uh, we're not going to get involved. We just take the words of Allah and we take them and we understand it in that way. And uh, in, in, in all honesty, I don't see a problem in combining both positions. We know he was there in the fo uh, form of Suraka. There's very, various narrations pointing to that. And he's capable of whispering to people as a jinn. You know, they have abilities we don't. So I think the best one is to combine. And so he was there as, as Suraka, but he was also whispering into everyone's minds. Yes, you're going to defeat them. You're going to win. And ultimately, he lied. And that's the lesson here. He's a liar. And he's not on anyone's, anyone's side, never. He, you know, he's there to betray everyone, right? A'udhu Billah. So, Allah protect us all from him. Ameen Ya Rabbul Alameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Okay, we'll stop here and continue next time, inshaAllah. Okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.